Hi, Allison Shepard Hildebrandt here, and I'm coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia today. So my husband Evan and I are traveling. We are getting ready to go visit his family and also go to a, a ministry conference called Bear Creek Ranch. And I'm coming to you today to share with you some just extraordinary things that God has been showing me um, throughout this journey of learning about the Bob Jones Gulliver Prophecy. But first, Evan is going to say hi. Hi. <laughs> so, as I said, we're traveling, and throughout the last year, God has been showing me some things about the Bob Jones Gulliver Prophecy. If you're not familiar with it, it was in 2005 that Bob Jones came to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, which is my hometown, and Bob had a vision. He saw the body of Christ is like this sleeping giant and he called this giant Gulliver. The head of this giant is in Cleveland, the heart in Columbus, Ohio, the reproductive organs in Cincinnati, Ohio. He had one arm in Philadelphia, the other arm in Indianapolis and stretching towards Illinois. He had a leg in um, Charlotte and he had a leg in Nashville and Bob said that God means to take all of Ohio, meaning like God is going to move in a, a mighty way in the state of Ohio. And then when Gulliver wakes up, he is going to plant his feet in Atlanta, Georgia. So my husband and I did not really plan to stay here in Atlanta, Georgia. This was kind of a, a last minute decision, but we found this amazing bear, uh, Airbnb with this beautiful view of the, the woods, and we thought, you know what, this is gonna be a good place for us to stop on our way down to visit his family. So we literally just found this place yesterday. We walk in to the hosts, um, we're, we're in like an apartment that is underneath their house, and it's an architect who's designed this house, it's beautiful. We walk into the, the host's house, and we're actually greeted by the son because the host couldn't be here to meet with us, he had a meeting. So literally, if we had left our house a little bit earlier, like a half hour earlier or a half hour later, we would have been met by the host instead of his son. So I'm just amazed at how God ordains our steps. And, and we show up, his son meets us, and he says, hey, would you like a tour of the house? So we said, sure. So he brings us into the house, and I start to notice some interesting artwork in the house. And Evan and I are both artists, so I take note of these things. But in particular, I saw this drawing, and it was in the shape of a, a crucifix. And I was like, what's the story behind this? And, and so the host's son, his name is Thor, and you're going to hear from him in a second. Um, Thor actually said, well, that's a drawing that I did in high school. And Thor starts to talk to me about how these little figures in this drawing represent people who have a vision that is greater than themselves. And, and I saw them constructing this body in the shape of a crucifix, which is made of hands and feet. And that's significant because as the body of Christ, we are his hands and his feet. And, um, and I also noticed this one hand in particular. And that's when Thor said to me, well, actually, I drew that hand from the, the very famous painting of Adam and God, where they're reaching out to touch one another. And actually, I saw that painting um, in Italy in 2010 in the Sistine Chapel. So he modeled that hand, the hand of Adam, in this drawing. And um, in a second here, I'm going to show you a video clip where Thor very graciously took this drawing off of the wall and um, allowed me to film it, allowed me to film him, film him talking about it. And I just feel like this has got to be another one of these prophetic signs that God is doing something significant right now in the body of Christ with the Gulliver prophecy. He's breathing life on this prophecy again. And in fact, I'm going to ask all of you who are watching, when you see this video, partner in prayer with me that God really does start to wake up the body of Christ and wake up Gulliver because as Gulliver wakes up, it is going to be connected to what Bob saw when he was taken to heaven on August 8th, 1975, where Jesus showed him that there would be a billion soul harvest. So I really feel like this is not a coincidence that I happen to be here in Atlanta and I see this drawing. 
Um, and I, I hope it encourages you, those who, know, who knew Bob. I, I didn't have the honor of knowing him, um, but God has been giving me the honor of discovering his prophecies and the amazing work that he did when he was alive. And I'm just so grateful for that. And there's more to come because God has been showing me just incredible things about what he's doing to wake up the body of Christ. And um, I've been actually talking with his very, very good friend, Gary Beaton, about this. And these are exciting times that we're living in. So stay tuned because I will be revealing more to you. But um, I felt like today it's September 13th. Uh, the number 13 is very significant because it actually relates to um, something that God showed me earlier this year. He put a, a sign language symbol up in my face that sort of looked like this, and I don't speak sign language. So I thought, man, what does that mean? And it was in a night vision. And so I was like, wow, what does this mean, God? And so I, I have a friend named David who speaks American Sign Language, and I, I took a picture in my hand, and I said, David, what is this? And he said, Allison, that's the letter M. And so I thought, okay, why, why God, are you giving me the letter M? I have no idea. But, um, but, you know, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing and the glory of kings to search it out. And so I said, God, you're awesome, and I'm, I'm excited that you're engaging me in this journey. So I'm going to look into what the letter M is. And as I looked into it, I discovered that M in Hebrew, it actually stands for uncountable numbers. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is like Abraham seeing the stars and being told that his descendants won't be able to be counted. This is like Bob Jones talking about the billion souls who are going to come to Jesus. So I thought, okay, God, this is this letter M. This is really significant. But then also, it's the 13th letter of the alphabet, and today is September 13th. So to get this very important clue about Gulliver and about the Billion Soul Harvest and the body of Christ waking up and about a great harvest and a revival is just incredible. And I'm, I'm blown away by God and all of his goodness, and I can't wait to share more. <laughs> He's so good. Thank you, Papa. Oh, thank you, Papa. So here you're going to hear from Thor, and he's going to tell you about this beautiful drawing um, in his house. So stay tuned. Hi, I am at an Airbnb, and when I walked into the house and I met the son of Robert, who owns this amazing home, um, I met his son Thor, and this is a drawing by Thor that actually reminded me of the Gulliver Prophecy, and it's interesting that I am actually right outside of Atlanta where um, Bob Jones saw Gulliver planting his feet. So it just seems to me like there are no accidents. <laughs> There's no such thing as coincidences. And I was really struck by this drawing because it reminded me of Gulliver, and there are all these little figures that are like little fingers that are working on this figure, so they're bringing in parts that have been missing. Um, looks like this guy is even scratching his head and thinking strategic things. These guys too. They've even got um, a, what is that? Is that, I'm not good with uh, trucks and things like that. What is that, like a bulldozer? It's like a crane, yeah. Oh, a crane, bulldozer. okay. And they're bringing in, there's a hand bringing in the face, which is interesting. And um, this guy is even doing some repair work, some soldering here. And so I'm here with Thor, who made this drawing, which is also interesting because his father was supposed to meet us, but he's at a meeting, and we just happen to be brought into this um, Airbnb here in Atlanta by his son, the artist of the drawing, who said some pretty amazing things about the people, the little fingers, who made this body. So, Thor, would you tell me again, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this, what you just told me? Yeah, so I don't think I had a certain goal that I wanted to accomplish with this, but it sort of, um, it sort of manifested itself along the way of what I was trying to accomplish. So. I had one title that I wanted to 
uh, sort of capture in this, which was handmade. Um, and so it was like sort of a punny uh, take on, on what we were doing in my, in my high school class. Um, and when I look back on it, I, I think that if you were to uh, look into the consciousness of the little, the little thumb people, they would be, um, their ultimate goal would be to create something bigger than themselves. Mm. Um, wow. And in that respect, they'd be sort of divine in their own right. Um, mm. Even though they are the ones that are smaller than the body itself, mm. they're the ones that are the divine beings. Um, mm. And that can be interpreted in a lot of ways, but uh, just to point out some features of the art, uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's... Uh, Mike, uh, Michelangelo, I think. Is it Michelangelo? Yeah, who did the Adam and God. The Adam God. reaching yeah. out to God. It's in the Sistine so, Chapel. Right. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Um, that's where I pulled that hand from. So it has some sort of uh, religious cues to it, but... Um, and most, mostly it was a study of the articulation of the hands and the movement of the feet as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just a smaller, smaller entity pulling together to accomplish a bigger and greater goal is the general motif of the, of the art. Thank you so much, Thor. Yeah. I'm so excited to share this with my friends. God is so good. So today is significant because it's the 13th day of September. And so for God to take us here to Atlanta where Gulliver is going to plant his feet and to show me a drawing like that of people coming together to make something, to construct something, to heal something, to repair it to bring in the missing pieces, to bring in the hand of Adam. I mean, that even speaks to Jesus being the last Adam. I'm just, I'm just in awe of his goodness. He just blows my mind. God, you're so good. So to, to see this important clue, to be in Atlanta where Gulliver is going to plant his feet on the 13th of September is significant. And I, let me tell you why. So God gave me the sign language symbol for M in a night vision. And as I said before, I didn't know what it meant. I had to ask my friend David, who speaks sign language, what it was. And so David said, it's an M. And I looked that up and it, you know, as I said before, it's the Hebrew symbol for uncountable numbers, but it's also the 13th letter of the English alphabet. I didn't realize until a couple of weeks ago that this is actually the 13 year 2018 marks the 13 years of the Gulliver prophecy. Bob Jones gave the prophecy in July in 2005 in Cincinnati, Ohio. So Gulliver is 13. M is the 13th letter of the alphabet. M in Hebrew means uncountable numbers. So we have this connection between the Gulliver prophecy and the billion soul harvest. But the fact that God gave me the M on April 9th is also significant and I just found out why <laughs> about that a couple of weeks ago um, that that actually April 9th was when Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral was and I had no idea so this year was the 50 year anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral on April 9th and so I know God is speaking about unity and racial reconciliation within his church. It's a huge part of it. But also, I was on the phone with Gary Beaton yesterday, and he said, Allison, April 9th is also significant because it was the day that Robert E. Lee surrendered at the Appomattox Courthouse. And I had no idea about that. That was 1865, and I'm just, I'm just blown away by God. <laughs> He's so good. Oh, man. So um, I'm just going to ask all of you who are watching to just join me in prayer right now um, as I, I pray over these things. And um, 
believe in God to breathe into this prophecy again so that Gulliver can mature and wake up and stand to his feet. Papa, I thank you so much. You're such a good father. I thank you for your sweet and beautiful son, Jesus. I thank you for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for this adventure that you've had me on to discover more about Bob Jones' prophecies and um, just for everything you're doing in the body of Christ. Father, I pray that you would just breathe on these prophecies again, that you would bring about revival in America and beyond, Lord, let it go beyond. And I pray that Gulliver would begin to break free from the things that have held him down, that he would be repaired, Lord, that he would be fortified, strengthened, comforted, and strong and ready to stand to his feet. So I, I, I speak to the feet of Gulliver. I speak to the legs. I speak to the reproductive organs. I speak to the heart. I speak to the head. I speak to the arms. And, and I say, arise. And I say, wake up. And I say, it's time. It's time. It's time for all of us as the body of Christ to wake up and be who God created us to be. And to realize that we, just like in the drawing, are part of something greater than ourselves. So I just thank you, Lord, for that revelation. It's in Jesus' mighty and beautiful name I pray. Amen.